Hey, what is going on, everybody? You know what today is, right? It's Friday, so that means it's another episode Friday. of Millennia with Billy and Mel. What is going on, guys? We have a very fun episode for you. Last week, uh, Mel wasn't here. Uh, we were able to interview somebody, uh, one of our friends, Heather, who's a commercial real estate agent. That was a really interesting conversation. If you missed that, make sure you go check that out. Uh, but guys, if you're jumping on the live, please make sure you comment who you are, where you're coming in from. We'd love to give you guys a shout out because this is an interactive show. We want you to interact, <laughs> with us, right? We want you to you know, disagree with us, agree with us, <laughs> maybe add some comments, maybe fact check us if Brandon's here, if he is. <laughs> Uh, and if you're going to watch the replay, you're going to listen to this. Make sure you subscribe to one of the many channels that we're on uh, and all that good stuff. But make sure yeah. you support us. We really appreciate it. But before we get into today's show of talking about brands, now we've talked about brands before, mm -hmm. but not from this standpoint, right? We've just talked about the top brands, I think, like the top 50 right. or something like that. Um, but this is a completely different show. Uh, but before, like I said, before we get into all that, Mel, what is going on? We missed you last week. What's I know. How are you? It has been, it's been a crazy couple weeks. I know when we had Ryan on the week prior, we were talking a little bit about some of the stress that I was under and, um, you know, trying to get back on a better routine and working out and um, sleep and all that. So last week, um, I hosted a Halloween party and a surprise bridal shower on Halloween for my best friend. So um, I had to, pulled two all nighters last week. And I was just a maniac. So I had a, a, a crazy week. Um, last week, I appreciate you taking the show with Heather because um, just had a lot going on. I, I wasn't feeling well, but my sister got COVID at her facility that she's at, which luckily they, um, you know, they kind of isolated her, got her antibodies. She had the vaccine and everything. So she's a trooper, obviously, but there's just so much going on. My parents are away. I'm dog sitting their dog and he's awesome, but it's, it's like when it rains, it pours kind of thing, <laughs> whatever. So it just was a lot. Um, and I just needed, uh, yeah, to get through that weekend. And, um, this week has been great. I've been pushing holiday cards. If you're a friend of mine on Facebook or, um, you know, just kind of, I might've already sent out some information on doing holiday cards for your family and business and, uh, just, you know, really hit that hard this year because I haven't done that in the last couple of years or honestly ever. I just sort of event industry would end in October, November, and it would be the holidays. So this year I actually said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to really do the work and reaching out to people and, you know, cold calling by email. But, um, but so I've been really busy this week, but I'm excited. I had a couple people respond already and get some orders. So that's good. Um, yeah. And just, just get, uh oh, Billy's <laughs> down. My camera just Billy's went crazy. Down. <laughs> the My ca Billy <laughs> fell, everybody. <laughs> if you're if you're listening, his camera just went down. Um, we saw the ceiling and the floor and everything. But um, just, but yeah, what about you? Hopefully, uh, hopefully your your week wasn't as hectic the last uh, as mine. No, no, it definitely wasn't. Um, but it was it was still good. We had a great conversation, like I said, last week with Heather, just because I think it was really interesting to hear like the side of like a real estate agent, but from a commercial aspect. Right. Um, most people, you know, they just think of real estate agents and stuff like that from from you know, buying a house. But right. um, but no, it was it was fun, it was a good time. Um, but there's a you know like I said, we're excited to have you back. We're excited to talk about today and what we're going to be talking about in uh, top. These are these are not just I'm top excited. brands. These are 10 brands that wouldn't exist without Millennium. I love it. Well, everyone and, knows I love branding. So I, I mean, yeah, you are I a do. brand type of person. And I don't know because I sent you this article because um, if you I didn't read it. Of, you didn't? So no, you I wanted it to be a surprise. I didn't really want to know. I thought it would be good if you just surprised you know you went through the list and i could hear them you know on the spot yeah like everybody but, else but what before we get into that since you're like in that world right you're in the world of kind of branding and stuff like that like what makes a good brand to you like what do you think of a, of a good brand well i think that it's memorable in the sense of the actual graphics like if we're talking logo or something um you know and you're branding visually obviously something very iconic 
you know, um, something very simple and iconic that, um, you know, that's memorable. But as far as the, as far as the branding, I think that it's quality. It's, you know, whether it's a product or service, it's quality. And it's about, we said about the culture, you know, the millennials love the brand culture and what they stand for, what's behind the, um, you know, behind the brands, the company standards and what they do, if it's in the community or if it's, uh, giving back to charity. Uh, so I think that it's overall just a good, um, a good quality product and brands and reputation and overall, um, you know, I mean, visually, obviously, but I think behind it, there's so much, um, you know, that you have to stand behind the, your, the quality of everything too. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I like you said, I think, I think, you know, every, everything comes down to branding now. Um, in, in how you position yourself, especially us being solo entrepreneurs, we are a brand, right? We are, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we both provide services and stuff like that, but what it comes down to is people want to do business with us because of the brand. And yeah, so, you're likable. Yeah, that's true. You can't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. you can, but. I mean, I guess work I mean, Grant, if you think about Grant, your boy Grant's kind of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He speaks the truth, you know, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, sometimes, but he tells it, to, tells it, tells it to you hard of what, you know, you're, you're doing and not doing, but I think their brand, um, you know, they have a good brand strategy and I think it's also about consistency, right. Of being consistently consistent with that brand. And, you know, when we talk about quality or the service and what you're offering and your pricing, just making, and you know, social media and marketing. I mean, all of that has to be consistent too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. So, um, I'm going to pull up these, uh, I'm, I'm going to start going through some of these brands, the top brands that would not exist without millennials. I have to get my phone off the original thing. That's what I use for. Um, Oh yes. Okay. You know, from the, to pick too. from the, uh, but anyways, getting right into it. And this is from Motley Fool. Um, it's a great website about all things financial. Um, but okay. coming in at uh, number 10, right? This is the, and this is a brand that I know Megan loves. I know it's very, like, I, I think a lot, I think I would have to say like 70, 80% of their clientele is probably women. Okay. Um, but it's a consumable, but uh -oh. it was huge. And I know other people, other companies have like really, you know, tried to go this route. But I remember this is like the name brand, and it's okay. Lacroix, the drink. Are you, are you a Lacroix fan? Like I'm, all the I'm not necessarily because I'm. I know my best friend Marcel was for a while, like a kick on it, but I don't drink a lot of seltzer water or club soda or like like I drink just regular water, you know, versus a uh, um, sparkling. But I definitely know the brand, and it's definitely uh, a very well-known thing. And they sell it at Aldi. Yes, they sell it at Aldi. They sell it at Target. Uh, that's and to be honest, like I, I haven't made it through all the ten, but Target did not make the top ten of brands oh. that wouldn't survive without millennials. And I think oh, wow. Target is totally a millennial brand. I don't know. About it you, might even be a Gen. Um, X too, you know, yeah, like the, the one before us because, but yeah, so we are, the millennials are carrying the LaCroix name. Interesting. No, I, I, I totally, totally. And something that's very interesting about LaCroix is that it was actually founded in 1981. Oh, but it, so it's, but it, but it mm. wasn't, it didn't gain notoriety until the millennials really mm. started fall, flocking to it, towards it. So you're welcome, LaCroix. You're welcome. Or, you guys are <laughs> about to file, go under. <laughs> yeah, you guys are about to file bankruptcy. A bankruptcy. If it wasn't for us millennials. So, but yes, that is number 10 is coming in. And then the next Interesting. one. Um, are you, let me ask you this. Are you a glass, do you wear glasses? You uh, yeah, I'm looking around. So mine are upstairs in my bathroom, but I'm supposed to be wearing them technically every day because I'm on the computer. My eyesight got worse over the years. But when I graduated um, college and then it was like 2007, 
Um, my eyes, my, my prescription just was ever so slight that I needed to get glasses barely. Um, and then it got worse over the years and I got cuter ones cause I don't like to wear them. I just don't like, so I got some really cute ones that are rose gold, like tortoise. I should be wearing them every day, yeah. but I don't. Yeah. So I'll work on that. Where did you get, let me ask you this. Where did you get your glasses? Are they just like, Oh, so I had gone, this is so funny because I didn't have eye insurance. So I went to um, America's Best and um, and then I think, yeah, I think it's one of the, like the chain stores and I got them there and they're, a, um, I want to say they're like a Michael Kors brand. You know, it's like a, it's a well-known fashion brand um, and they were not cheap. They were like $300, but I thought if I, well, here's the, here's the funny. I thought if I got them, they were so cute, even though they were a lot of money, that I would wear them every day. And I still don't, <laughs> even though they're really cute. Spent the money, but so yeah. yeah, I think it's just one of the one of the um, chains, whatever the. It's not America's Best. It's a different one. What's a? Well, the next brand that couldn't survive without us is Warby Parker. Ah, yes, I've I've heard of them. Yes, I, Megan's actually gotten some glasses from them. Okay. And it is cool because like what you do is like you pick out like a couple different styles. Okay. I think up to six different glasses. They even send you sunglasses and then you try them on, right? Okay. And then whatever ones you don't want, you send back. Kind of like a subscription box, right? Okay. Like, you know, like I was using, um, I can't remember the name, Stitch Fix for a while. Right. Uh, probably another brand that couldn't survive without millennials, um, just subscription boxes in general. But uh, but yeah, uh, you know, great quality. I mean, she okay. loves them. She's, she's worn them. It's the clear ones that she, you'll see her in pictures a lot with. Yeah. She, she I like the clear ones. ones. That's yeah. a, definitely like a millennial thing too. The clear yeah. glasses, like the frames. But so I think actually, I'm not going to lie. So I actually did that now that I think about it. I did that like two years ago and I got a couple of them samples right before I ended up getting my glasses. I was trying different things on and different ones because what's interesting, um, I know a, a woman that owns an eyeglass, uh, eye, eye biz, it's a European eyewear. And she, uh, after, you know, a couple years or a couple hours, I, you can fit your face to different glasses. So a lot of people that wear, like when I wear the big ones or the trendy ones or whatever, they don't sometimes look good on your face. You think they look good. But when you have different um, shapes, different size, it's supposed to be a third, a third, and a third. So your your actual glasses, um, if you get them fitted for your face, they're actually only supposed to go, they're supposed to be able to see your eyebrows. And then you're really? supposed to be able to see right here because it's only supposed to be a third. So these big ones, you know, um, and that's why the sunglasses, like you see some of these girls wearing these big sunglasses and I did too and my sister and it's like, but they're way too big for your head because I have such a small forehead and you have a smaller bot, you know, bottom. It's actually interesting that you can get them. Like somebody can actually say, nope. And then, oh, like your bridge, like some, I have like a little bit of a bigger bridge. Sometimes it makes your nose look even wider. Yeah. But you just think that they look cool, but you don't realize that sometimes behind it, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah. My nose is such like, I guess from being Italian is like so straight. Like it's, it, it's like, so it, Whenever I wear glasses or sunglasses, it looks different compared to like everybody else. So right, um, but I've never. Well, used it's cool that you can try them on. That's yeah. the idea of this brand, right? Yeah, and and I this is totally like right up that like I said right up the alley of the subscriptions. Mm -hmm. right? I think that's a huge millennial thing nowadays. Um, obviously, being able to be a little bit more trendy, and from what I heard, that they're not as expensive as maybe some of the glasses like you got like the $300 right. pair for one pair. Like I think it's like a hundred dollars per pair or something along those lines. But yeah. Um, but well, you know, well, yeah. like I said, I, I, I see a lot of ads for it. I like the idea that you can try them on. I think that's neat. Like they, you know, obviously, you know, you, you have to pay a little bit or you have to put your credit card in. Right. And if you don't send it back, like you can't just steal them. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, and they're trustworthy. They're trusting us. Um, but I think it's cool because, you get to try them on and then, you know, if you don't like them, you can send them back. Yeah. Yeah. So coming in at number eight, and I don't think these were in any particular order. I don't like when I was looking at the article, they yeah. were like, Oh, this is number one. This is just like the top 10 brands. This is a very important brand. Uh, and it is really, I think spearheaded by millennials. 
um, just for simplicity, like we talked about with brands, right? Being simple, being something you could use, something that you use every day. Um, and people use this every day. It, Venmo. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> absolutely. I just Venmo. got Venmo payment. You know, I, I accept Venmo for my business and it's so easy because who doesn't have that or PayPal even, but, um, but wow. I mean, Venmo really Yeah, like you're grew. Sharing, ex sharing expenses, like, cause let's be honest, a lot of us as millennials, if we weren't married, um, mm -hmm. right, we're probably have roommates at the time and stuff like that. So you're splitting stuff, you go out to dinner, it's easier to be like, hey, you're gonna put it on one card and you Venmo everybody or something like that, you know? Um, yeah, I, and you can see, so do you, so I have mine set to private because I sometimes don't want people to know like who and who I'm like sending money to, but, or like how much and whatever. So I have mine set on private, but a lot of people have it on public and they send stuff and it's so funny because I could, it could be a drink at the bar, right? I see one girl, she gave a guy, you know, drinks, like, you know, so probably, somebody just ran their card while they're standing there. They say, Hey, you know, I'm sending 20 bucks or something, but yeah. it's funny because a lot of it is like emojis too. So you see like the eggplant emoji, like just as something funny, like guys sending it to another guy. Like so it's, <laughs> it's really funny. I don't get into looking at it. Cause I don't, I go in, I pay, I receive and I, you know, like, transfer to my bank account and that's it. I don't like hang out on there. But when I am on there, I see some really funny stuff that people, you know, post like, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think it also stems too from our generation not carrying cash too. Like, I oh, like absolutely. The like the generation before us and even boomers, like boomers definitely always have cash on them. Like, absolutely. Like, always like $100, right? In 20. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And men, you know, like, and older yeah. men. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. yeah. But like, I like Megan's different. Like she'll, she'll have some cash on her and stuff like that. But I like rare opportunity, like never I will have cash on me. Um, it just doesn't happen very often. So well, yeah, they spend it on dumb shit. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, cause I think it's like, you don't think maybe just, it's just, you know, I feel like, Oh, it's in my pocket. I need to spend it. Type I thing, know. Right. And get rid of it. So, um, but you know, like I said, I definitely know a ton of people. I didn't know, see, I don't have a Venmo. Megan has a Ven Venmo. So I don't know all the stuff that you were just talking about, like the private versus non-private. Right. So that's interesting, uh, type of deal. But, um, number seven, moving right along kind of goes along the lines with, uh, a Venmo. Um, and I'm going to share my first story, my first experience using this brand. I want to hear your first experience because I know you've used this brand before, but it's Uber. Oh. Uber is a brand. And I remember well, right now, I don't know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I remember the first time hearing about Uber, it was probably maybe five, six seven years ago probably longer than that at this point probably eight years um i don't know when uber first came about uh look Sh sean uh you know did you know he's a cpa so he would know I this Venmo is powered by paypal yeah um, i did not know owned, that but which was owned by wasn't didn't elon musk own paypal and sell it or something along along those lines yes. that's how he got all his money yes um, i think um sean if you're still watching you you know uh, what's his brand is not here today. So you're going to have to, fact yes, check me he's our one. bud. Yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, wow. But yeah, I didn't I know that. Uh, but I remember, I remember I was working for the hotel at the time and I was up in New York city. I was working, uh, helping another hotel cause they had a really busy event. And I remember like, I was like, Oh, I got to get a taxi. Cause I want to go see the empire state building. I had a couple of mm -hmm. days, you know, days off. I wanted to go see stuff. And the guy at the thing, he was the same age as me, goes, why don't you just use Uber? And I said, what, what's Uber? I know. And he's like, oh, it's this thing. You, you have an app and it's got the car. Like you can see the car coming to you. And it's just some, you know, it's a, some random person, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they pick you up and then you pay them and then you get out. And so yep. uh, my first experience was in a big Escalade, very first Uber that I sells, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know if they had that option. I think it was just all just one thing. And uh, I remember the guy super professional, looked like a limo driver. Um, 
but right. I've used, you know, I've even had to order, you know, uh, Ubers for people before. Yeah. So um, yeah. I know that's a thing now. So, but what oh, about yeah. you? So absolutely. I used to Uber everywhere. So I always said after my divorce, um, my ex-husband didn't drink very much and he would drive. So I didn't need to really worry about um, drinking and driving because he would always drive. And after that, I needed to worry about it. And I either needed to not drink. I needed to get a ride. Um, I needed to sober up to be able to drive, obviously, or I needed to, you know, like, yeah, get an Uber. So when that came out, um, I was using Uber a lot and I, and I, different cities that I would travel to in New York, I would use it a couple times, um, more before it came to Harrisburg. Cause we would use cabs back in the day and 2006, um, I was 21 and for a couple years we would, um, there'd be actually a couple cabs through Harrisburg and you could call you know, like capital cab and we would actually oh. use cabs sometimes um which is hilarious because you don't even see them anymore around here um but there's been towns that i've gone to rochester about probably th three or four years ago they didn't they don't have uber up there at yeah. the time so when we were you know planning things you have to consider that some places don't have uber um i know when we went to cartain in columbia they don't have uber they just have their you know they have drivers but it's you know you have to be careful with, um, you know, in different countries, but yeah, love Uber, except Uber now is just, you know, it's the, the drivers, they're having issues, whatever the company is going on with the company, whether they're not getting paid or, um, things that are going on, there are very few Uber drivers, like in our area here, it takes, you know, um, oh yes, Sean, so Sean said he's a member, Elon Musk member of PayPal sold it to eBay. Okay. I didn't even know that. Um, but um yeah uber two years ago in houston from airport to hotel so that's a good thing train stations um you know airports all that you know great way to get um i know people have uber uber black where they can um they use it so much that they get they get free rides um you know in and out of the cities and stuff so i know a lot of people but right now it is hard to get an uber i was stranded actually up at the hotel a couple weekends ago and it was a really bad really bad because I can walk home from, um, you know, downtown Hershey, no problem. And the hotel's a little bit longer, but I went out and my friends left. I was just walking and, um, and no Ubers. So I just kept walking, no Ubers. And it was just, you know, I just, I ended up just walking <laughs> because I didn't want to wait. I mean, it was only like, you know, it wasn't even 12 o'clock, but, um, but yeah, it's kind of scary sometimes when you rely on that and then, I, you know, no friends available, no, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, so yeah. right now they're, um, you know, it's, it, sure, it's great, but, um, but right now there's just hardly any available. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that was always like my biggest fear, especially like, I remember like I use, I definitely have used probably the most time I've ever used Uber is like from airport to where, where I was going. Mm -hmm. Um, it was always, I was always weirded out though, or like nervous as all get out when like you would schedule an Uber. Like, have you ever scheduled one like to pick you up at a mm -hmm. certain time? And you're like, all right, like, I don't know, like, cause I've scheduled like for a taxi to come pick me up. I just felt like that was like, like going to happen. Like I knew right. there was going to be a taxi there, but like, you're like, uh, is this person going to really show up? And right. every time they sure enough show up. So. Yeah. Like if you need it for, to get to the airport for a specific time, but, um, but yeah, so I, when I lived in Mechanicsburg, it was about, you know, f four years ago before I moved over back to Hummelstown, I would go downtown and sometimes I couldn't drive. So I would just Uber home or get a ride and I would have to go get my car the next morning. And I would, um, and even if it's just a Friday night, like our Saturday night, I would just get up and do my thing. Well, sometimes it would take 30 minutes for them to come. And I'm thinking, you know, if there's people that are need to get to work, like luckily I have my own business, but if it's during the week and it's like, hey, you know, you gotta pay attention to the timing on things because you're relying, you know, you have to wait for them. They get yeah. there when they get there. Um, but yeah, it's funny. I um, I definitely had heard a couple Uber drivers when I was um, I was doing something around the Philly area. And I I forget what if it was getting to the train station. I don't know what I was doing. I, I don't remember. But I, I met an Uber driver there who would take somebody to New York um, for business. 
And I don't know if it was every day, but they would, the money, the business paid for it. And the money that they would take for a train uh, or for them to drive themselves, they, they wanted to get work done while they were doing it. So they would actually, this Uber driver woman, she used to take somebody back and forth to New York. That's insane. Yeah. Like that would be. In that, a new way. I mean, I, I mean I it was $200. That, it was, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lot, but I guess the money wasn't an issue and they just wanted to be in a car and safe and, you know, not, yeah, it's interesting. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that, but there's uh, the next brand um, is, is one that Uber has ventured into, but I think these guys kind of got the stronghold on this because they were really the first one, I believe. But um, I use it from time to time, but like, uh, you know, again, it's for sim, you know, for being sim for streamlined stuff and whatnot, but it's uh, Grubhub. Uh, mm -hmm. Grubhub is number six as a brand that would not. And I mean, let's be honest through the last year and a half, two years, I mean, the use of Grubhub has gone significantly up just because of when we were dealing with the pandemic and uh, oh, yeah. we're still dealing with that. But like, you know, um, what Uber has Uber Eats now. I don't know. Right, DoorDash. Popular. Yeah, DoorDash. Um, but a, a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of this, a lot of the uh, restaurants really relied on those delivery services to help them. And just imagine where those restaurants would be if the if this these types of services didn't exist at this time. Yeah, and I have talked to some friends that live in Manhattan and stuff, and it's a lot easier and quicker to get stuff there because everything's so close, um, and they get they can get their you know on the spot groceries delivered within 20, 30 minutes. But what's funny about that is um, you know my friend Chase that owns Sweet Ride tried to, um, well, is providing services for free rides in Hershey area. And then they're expanding into Harrisburg uh, by getting paid advertising to pay for the actual service. And then it's free rides for people. Uh, they're running it right now. It's great. It's in Tesla's, so it's safe, speak, speaking about Elon Musk. Um, but there, it's, it's really safe and it's clean and they, they open the door for you and all this great stuff and it's free, but they're also, we're doing the free food delivery. So a lot of people saw me helping them out and I would go out to the restaurant yeah. Um, but what I found out though, is that the other, you know, the DoorDash and the Uber, the Uber Eats and, um, and the Grubhub, they charge the customer has to pay a little fee, which we know, but yeah. the restaurant actually pays a percentage of every really? meal, the restaurant. And it's sometimes it was like, um, 8%, uh, whether it was like three to wow. five, one of them was eight. And what they were saying was that, um, that it was really taking a lot of their, the sales, um, you know, and, and nobody knows it. The cons we don't know that the restaurant has to pay. We just thought that we have to pay for the delivery, but the restaurant actually pays for it. So it was neat with the sweet ride. They were offering these services for free because, um, or even if they did it for one or 2%, right. Um, it was still Would saving be them money. Yeah. Or like a flat fee. So, oh, your mom, Peggy, we waited three hours for Grubhub one time, never again. Yeah, well, and that's what ha was happening during the pandemic. We found out when I was in and out of the restaurants talking about the whole process because I learned a lot about it. So there's no guarantee that, so the, the Grubhub, let's just say, or the, you know, they could, they could get, pick it up. Well, sometimes it, the food sat there for an hour and then they came and picked it up and took it to the person and it was lost and it was all these things. And then they, they had to pay for that food and then they got hit with a fee. It's crazy. Yeah. So and, as much as it's a good thing to, cause it's convenient for us as millennials, look at it, look at it. They don't, we don't think we only care about ourselves. On yeah. <laughs> no. And it's just like, I mean, going back to, you know, uh, it's, it's, like I'm thinking about health safety wise. And I think my mom just brought that up. It's a violation. Mm -hmm. That's what right. she, that's what she will always say when we walk into a restaurant, she'll say, she'll see something and be like, that's a violation. But um, <laughs> I like that. You know, it, it's like one thing, it, it's like one thing, like when a Domino's driver, you know, it's an employee of Domino's, like, right. You know, they have it in their little you know thing and they're like, you order it. There's going to be a Domino's driver, right? Like right. it might take 45 minutes for them to get, well, yeah, they give you the, you. Mm -hmm. you know, you, they give you the time frame, but, um, but still like, I don't know if I just, cause you don't even know 
that person hasn't been vetted. You don't know if they're like. No, it's tr again. We're tr we're being <laughs> we're we're the ones that are trusting, not the other way around. You know that we're gonna yeah. get our food safe, and um, it is now that you think about it, it's kind of scary what <laughs> could be done. But when I um yeah, my ex boyfriend used to order um DoorDash uh, all the time, and uh, um and we would get food on Sundays and uh. Everything was fine. It was very quick, and well, you know, I mean, it whatever time that they told us, but uh, seemed safe. And they were doing the contact list where they would just leave it on your, you know, your porch. But man, it, it's come a long way from the Pizza Hut delivery, you know, from the from the delivery guys. And you and you had to, and you paid cash. I mean, this is before they even really accepted credit cards. Like I remember when I was younger, they would wait there. They would they would take your money. You didn't even pay up front. Yeah. Now you pay online, you've had to pay in full, right? Yeah. This way it was like, here's your pizza, give me my money, and then, and a tip, you know? It's was it, funny. Do you, so do you, going back to like Pizza Hut and stuff like that, do you, are you the person that already tips or do you wait for that person to get there and tip? Because sometimes if you go ahead and tip and like they take like forever or they're, something happens and they're like really rude and you're like, oh man, I just tip this guy like, 10 bucks but he didn't yeah. really deserve 10 dollars are you the type of person that goes I, to I haven't had like the delivery stuff for so long and when I've done it it's through the app and it's already include you know you can kind of already include it in the app I feel like but and I never have cash so I wouldn't be I'm not like a good person to ask you know yeah uh, but I think that I would still give somewhat of a tip we should do a whole podcast on tipping it came up last night at Iron Hill the King of the Hill nights and we just had this whole thing last night about it because do you tip even when you're picking up food with delivery? If somebody's, um, you know, if you're if you're getting oh, to go, yeah. and I always give a couple bucks. Like if it's on my card, I round up. I give a couple bucks. And it was last night. Um, my friend couldn't go. He's filling up his growlers. It's half price growlers. You would love this. And um, they're expensive craft beer, so you get half price. And then he uh, gave me the money for it. I filled him up, and I said, "Here's the here's the bill." And I was waiting for him to send me how much he was going to Venmo me, which is great, <laughs> Venmo. And it was like the same exact amount. And I said, oh, do you want to leave a tip? And the guy that I'm with, my friend there and my other friends are there. And they're like, yeah, throw a couple bucks. And I'm like, well, you know, that's coming out of my pocket. Like it, I'm doing this, him a favor, right? And then I'm going to tip her. But even though he's not going to tip her, like we should do a whole podcast about this. But I was in the service industry. And I always give 20% unless they suck. They're probably going to get 15, but I always do 20, if not more, you know what I mean? If they're good. Oh, but yeah. so I ended up giving like five bucks extra that guilted me. Um, but it was fine. Like I gave, I gave a couple extra bucks, but it was just, we should do a whole podcast on that. No, I totally agree. I am um, like, there's so many like questions about like what you should do and, and, all those types of services. Yeah, just picking up. They're still preparing yeah. the stuff, right? They're still yeah. putting it together. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. Like, if you if people really understood what servers get paid, even on a to go order, like you should still be tipping. But like, right. like we said, you could we could get we can go down the the trail here of what yes. you should be doing at that. So this next brand is definitely another millennial brand. It's not something that I've used personally. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, we're all, what a millennials all about. We're about collaboration. We're about, you know, team and building and community and all this stuff, right. And being around people and whatnot. And so, um, and these, I feel like are good. And this was something I actually brought up in our, the commercial, uh, real estate agent Heather, I brought it up with her. I think you're going to see an explosion of these types of places here in the next couple of uh, uh, couple of years, and it's called WeWork, huh? Um, co-working spaces. Oh, so like the like the places. So typically, what you'll see is like you'll it, you'll see like a a warehouse and or like you'll see like a like for instance, there's one here in um, Lancaster called I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but like it's like legit like you it's this big space they have like little desks that you can rent you can buy um, wi-fi for the day like you can rent the desk for the day or they have like offices like just like an office like a room that you would be in like in your like at your house um but you rent it and it it, it comes with wi-fi desks stuff like that and they usually have like um like conference rooms that you could yeah. like you could use at the same time but like there'll be multiple businesses 
Oh, it's called the hive. That's what it's called. Um, because okay. all these the beehive. Will, yeah. 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 They'll kind of cluster, uh, into this one area, uh, into this one space. So, um, there's one here actually in rock lit. that I can't, that I was remembering too, um, that does the exact same thing. So, mm. um, is that something that, uh, that have you ever seen or used or thought about using? Yeah. So I've, I've always either had a space in my house or like an office, or, um, I have my retail shop with an office in the back, but startup in Harrisburg is actually a co working space and they have some really cool stuff there. Exactly what you said, the conference rooms, the areas that they can do the whiteboard, their desks, they can, um, you know, have open, you can have the closed desks and people rent them for the month or the year, you know, the whole year, it's their office, but they have a kitchen space too. And then they have areas that you can do presentations and have chairs out. Um, so actually I think, I think it's a great idea. I don't have the need for it just because I'm working from home. But I think that if I were in a position where I didn't have an office or I needed to meet with people, I think it's a great professional setting for people. There's also another one, um, in Harrisburg. I think that I forget what that one's called too, but I think it's great because it also builds, we were just, I was just talking about this with a friend that, you know, we have our own businesses and stuff, but we don't have that sense of community and that, that feeling that we, we work together as a team. And I almost feel that if I went in somewhere and I had a desk and other people were there, even though that they were working on their own business or, you know, their own thing, I feel that it would make me almost feel like I was part of a, something bigger. And, um, you know, there's that you can have coffee breaks and you can have, you know, they have the kitchen, they have the coffee, they have all that cool stuff, grab lunch with somebody. I, I think that it would, it would be really neat. I just, I'm so used to doing, you know, this way, but I think that if somebody was starting up or, um, you know, changing, I think it'd be a great for sure for millennials. Yeah. Sean's got an interesting comment here. He says, I think it's a huge scandal in the documentary on Netflix for WeWork and I'm not, and I'm not saying like i'm promoting we work um, oh yeah the millennial podcast doesn't promote it. we're not we're, we're not, we're not promoting we we're work, not. but more so uh the community space my okay. mom says that there's one in rehoboth cafe right. reno Working. um but the one here in Lidditz is really cool because it's um there's a lot that's based in like like video production, sound production, stuff like that. So oh. you can actually, and I use was, equipment. Yeah. Like they actually have a booth there oh. that we need to try one time. It's a podcasting booth where, oh, they that's have all, cool. where they have all the equipment set up for you. You just go in and you just, how know, much is it? Do you know how you can rent I, it? I, I'm sure you can rent it. I'll have to figure out cool. maybe, you know, maybe for like the hundredth episode we, we splurge. Yeah. And, 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 Cause we are, I forgot to tell everybody we're 60 years old today. We're 60 episodes. Y'all. 60 episodes. We're almost to uh, the point where we can collect social security. Um, <laughs> or we could collect social security if we wanted to, but, uh, but, um, but yeah, I think those those brands, the the community workspaces. I think you're gonna see a lot more of those, especially because right. bigger people companies, are leaving. Yeah, or maybe closing, they, and they close their offices during COVID. A lot of places, yeah, you know. This, so maybe people are looking for, um, you know, working remotely, but they want to get out of the house. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's a brand that I've just recently started using. Uh, I use the other. There's a competitor to this one. Um, but it's, I mean, if, if we're talking about millennials, we, I mean, we have some of the greatest music, especially rap music that's ever been produced, yeah. especially compared to what's, what's being played now. Um, but you know, that's me being a millennial, yeah. but this is something that you probably use on a regular basis. I know it's something that I use. I know the millennial podcast is on this thing. I know um, what it is. <laughs> It's Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> I love Spotify. my Spotify. So um, I, before, you know, I started using Spotify now just because I like the podcast selection a lot better. But for a long time, I used Pandora. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're both good. I definitely like the functionality better in Spotify um, mm -hmm. comparative to, um, to the Pandora. But I mean, it's, it, it, like we grew up with like Napster, right? We grew up like with being able to like digitally have, have music, right? Um, we're really like that first generation that didn't really have to rely on like, you know, popping in a, even though I had a Walkman and a CD and stuff like that, like 
I like we we were like really like that first generation to start using. Remember how big like the i what, iPod? The, it was like this thick. Like oh it was yeah, huge. It had the little spin wheel that you could like. Yeah, and you, you had make, to still download the songs to then put on, or you had to have the CD then put it on, transfer it onto the iPod. Yeah, yeah. But I remember like that sound that wheel would make when you would, it would make that clicking chick, sound. Chick, chick, chick. Yeah, and you'd have to like you know go pick the song, pick the file, then hit you know hit play. But and the screen was still like green. Well, <laughs> there's not like iPods aren't even out anymore. Like the shuffle came out was like the cheap like the little one that you could just go running and like listen, and then the other oh, one like that little clip thing. It was like yeah, a, but yeah. the shuffle, but yeah. th they don't even make iPods. They don't even sell them anymore um, because I probably Spotify and the Pandora and stuff. Well, it's interesting. I use Spotify. I have a couple great mixes that I work out to um, and that I sit and uh, do work to and, you know, just listen while I'm doing work and I can put it onto my, um, you know, who the girls over here, the girl and the, the, and we can't say her name and you can actually uh, put it together. But I also p pay for the Amazon music because I like to sing in the kitchen and have like all these songs. That's like so much a month that you pay. But the Spotify, I do the free version, but there's ads. So I actually was considering doing that because I was at a networking event. We plugged in the phone, which is so in interesting that, again, things that have changed over the years that we can plug in a phone into the car and into the speaker somewhere now and, you know, just play any type of music. But there were ads. So we had to actually go over to the Amazon music um, because I don't I don't there's no reason for me to pay for it when they have all the other ones. Yeah. Um, but I also think that it's funny. Um I, it still uses data. Like even if you have unlimited data or you turn your data off for me, I don't have unlimited data. I don't know why, whatever plan I have, I mean, I still pay $120 a month, but it's like, it's not unlimited. So I don't like to use the apps for the music that you have to use if I'm not on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and no, I've tried I, to download them, but for some reason they're not there. I don't know. Yeah. So. I don't pay for spotify probably i don't think it's that expensive i think it's like it's like five or six bucks a month isn't it yeah it's that's what the amazon is like 7.99 so i could yeah. do it but yeah um yeah so like I mean, background music sometimes yeah I, I'm totally, in the gym then, i i have wi-fi so wow i haven't used itunes in forever uh, apple music still syncs with oh. itunes and ipods yeah i mean yeah. i just i mean like i said i haven't used wow iTunes. I remember you had to like get your iTunes up. You had all your music and then you had your like yeah. your iPad or pod connected to your computer and you had to like push the files over. Yeah, or the, the CD, but like I don't even have CD drives. I mean, my power I know, book. I looked, I, looked my, that, I, I looked for that the other day. I was like, wait a minute. No, there's have. not even a CD drive. So even like back in the day, what we would do is we would have the CD drive or have an external. I ended up getting an external CD drive, disk drive that had a USB. And then you could do it. And um, I don't know what it was for. But the MacBook doesn't have it. The iMac doesn't have it. Um, like the newer ones, they don't even have it. So I, I remember about, you know, yeah, maybe 10, 12 years ago, I guess, I had put all my CDs onto my, my iTunes. And I had all the CDs on there. Um, but again, it takes up space and, you know. Yeah, yeah no, like I said, I... I mean, you have everything like that you need, like right here, right? right? You have your, it's all into one thing. And then sometimes people like can play like, you know, the reason the shuffle went away is because the Apple watch came here and you can pl actually play music from your Apple watch to your Bluetooth speakers or like your Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. So, you know, you don't it's even crazy. need that anymore. So, um, but Spotify. So the next one is interesting. It's something I've never used, um, but it is a big, I remember in college, like even later in, you know, in life when I was out of college, this was a big thing. Now there's a ton of these things out here. Uh, there's all kinds of different, you know, uh, date apps and it's tinder <laughs> oh the millennials with the dating apps with the dating apps so i think like you had online dating like i think dating apps are way i mean because like i said i don't know a lot about these because i've just never been on them so um but i remember like online dating being a big thing like the 
the dating websites where you would get matched with somebody and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then wasn't like, is, isn't like Tinder, like more so like you swipe or is that a different one? So I don't know. Cause I'm not on dating apps either. However, a lot of my friends are, I think Tinder is the one that you swipe left and swipe right. If you're interested okay. or not. Okay. Um, but there's Bumble, which is another one that I know people are on. Yeah. That's another um, one I've heard a lot about is Bumble. Uh, and yeah, but I've, I've known people to, um, to go out, just meet people, go on dates, get drinks, get dinners, like, um, you know, just more casual looking for companionship or like obviously hookups. But, but what was funny about the, um, when you said about the old with match, I mean, I think that match.com match .com yeah. is definitely something that was out for, you know, in, in 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, I say 20, 20 to 30 years ago, I think it, I don't know when it started, but, but it originally, I feel like people were meeting with online dating was AOL chat rooms Ooh, and a, it was AOL chat rooms. There was chat rooms. There was some weird ass shit going back in the day. Remember there was like some real freaky shit, like fetish yeah. things. You go into this chat room. It's like, Oh, if you love, you know, dogs and you go in and all these people are talking about dogs, but then like there was, online you know looking for this and there was some weird ass shit back then yeah. but, wild, but the, now because millennials are so into the apps i feel like match still has an app i'm sure i don't know but yeah absolutely but um that one i look at is more people that are serious looking for like marriage a like committed relationship i think right and then the tinders are more lax i think it's just hey something casual yeah, I don't know. that's what I always thought. Like Tinder was like mainly and Bumble. Used for, was like was just like those hookups. But I actually, going back to when I was working in New York, there was this guy a little bit younger than me. Um, he was using Tinder, meeting girls, stuff like that. And he actually met his wife on Tinder. Like, yeah, they, they got married. It was crazy. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's that one story that you hear that somebody got married from Tinder. I mean, they're still married today, too. Like, yeah. it's been a long time. But um, but it it. Yeah, that, that's what I always thought. And um, yeah, my like aunt said, and uncle, my, my uncle Art and Aunt Mary Lou, they're in Texas. They met in an AOL chat room. I think they were yes, like singles, AOL like looking. Meeting people. Yeah, they got married. They, this was, I mean, they've been married for probably Tinder um, spike. Yeah. 20 years, maybe, you know, 20 years. And um, yeah. I mean, maybe even 25. I forget. I, I don't know. But they met in an AOL chat room, which is funny. Um, yeah, but yeah, AOL. I think there's there's a lot of people I, that meet on. What was your AOL chat name? Do you or List like One Ten? Your... List One Ten, <laughs> um, because my nickname was List. Now, obviously, Mel, but yeah. List was my childhood nickname, and uh, One Ten is my birthday, and I use that One Ten all the time. So List One Ten. Yep, that's so funny. What was yours? Uh, mine was just D E wrestler. That was that was it. Yeah. It was it wasn't very wasn't very uh, you know something something big so. the, the the wrestler uh i yeah. actually reconnected with a guy from elementary school or middle school from baltimore when i was in college in 2006 uh we didn't we weren't on facebook yet because our school was an art school it wasn't like a top 10 it was only back when they had like the top you know biggest school of each state so mm -hmm. university of maryland you know penn state um and it was really just 10 or 20 schools um and you had to have your school id well my school wasn't on there but i was on instant messenger and I remember reconnecting and we would aim, we would still do aim, aim messenger. And that was in 2006. Isn't that funny? And that I had my is... away message. You had your away oh. message. Like it was a John Mayer quote. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I remember you could like have like a specific thing that says that you were away. That's amazing. Oh, That's technology. Back in the day. BRB. Yeah. Um, coming in at number two. I've used a couple of times. I have a funny story about this and I want to share it, but, uh, but I'm going to pop it up here. Um, and it's getting bigger and it's people are turning this like into a full fledged business, like with multiple properties that they do this with. And it's Airbnb. Oh, uh, yeah. it's a big one. Um, I, I know there's other companies that do this, but I think Airbnb is the mm -hmm. biggest one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, VRBO and, is another one. Okay, is that that I've seen commercials for that now that you say mm -hmm. that? But uh, my first Airbnb experience was amazing. It was amazingly bad. Um, <laughs> amazing. And, and Megan's bad. probably gonna laugh because she's in the other room. She probably, she knows the story pretty well. So 
uh, our company had a every two years we have a big convention in Atlanta, Georgia at the Georgia Dome. Uh, the Georgia Dome is no longer there, but they're going to have it at the new stadium. Um, but anyways, w- everybody was getting hotels. Hotels were super expensive at this point. Mm-hmm. And Air- we found an Airbnb with like, it was like me and like, I think it was like two other guys. Yeah. Me and two other guys. We found an Airbnb that was like pretty much across the street in Atlanta. It was almost in a rough part of Atlanta, but not really. It was like right there on the outskirts, but we were literally like maybe two minutes away from the stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was like, man, this thing is really cheap for some reason, right? Mm-hmm. This thing, there's got to be a reason. Like we, I looked at the pictures. It looked fine, right? And so I didn't book it. The Another guy uh, in, on, in our group booked it. Um, and we, so we walk in, right. And there's people in there. There's people just standing there. Like there's these, and I'm like, okay, what is, what's going on here? And there were the people that were renting it to us, but they were living there the same time we were renting it. So we rent. So I had to sleep on a couch for three days (laughs) while, and so like, of course, we're like we go out in Atlanta, and they they were really cool people. Don't get me wrong; like they were the coolest people. They were real chill. Like they, we were like <laughs> we were watching TV with them and stuff, so they were really fun. But um, you know, we there were some nights you get home late, a little bit late. You want to sleep in a little bit, right? Your next event didn't start until later in the day, and like it would be like you know they'd be going to work at like six o'clock in the morning. And you're like trying to sleep. Like, oh my the, god! The couch I was on was like in the living room. Oh so, no! Like, Did you know that? Like when you booked it, though, or no? No, no. Yeah. But I didn't know. But apparently, mm-hmm. in booking Airbnbs, there's like two types of things you can do. Like you can either just like rent the whole your house, room, mm-hmm. rent the whole house, or you can rent like a room in the house. And uh, and apparently, next time I do an Airbnb, oh, uh, I'll be the one to make sure. Yeah. yeah. So I love Airbnb. Um, I got my mom into it a little bit. They travel here and there and they get like little cabins and stuff and they go for weekends with the women away and um, they do girls trips. And then my dad, they'll do couples trips. So they do. Um, they've been doing Airbnb a lot. Yeah. There's tiny houses. Uh, Sean said he rented a tiny house in New York. Um, but I actually the girls and I rented an Airbnb in Lancaster for a night. We just came in, we wanted to go to dinner, we wanted to drink and we didn't want to have to come back to Hershey. So uh, we did it was, you know, um, maybe 50 bucks each or something. Um, and we had a whole place. It was a it was a, a, a townhouse. We it was three floors and we each had our own room and it was great. We went out to dinner. We just walked back. Uh, so locally, you can do it just to get out of the city, you know, get just to kind of go away. Um, when I went to California, I, I got one that I was actually in the basement. It was a, a bedroom and a full bath that you would come in and out of their garage. So you were basically on the downstairs underground almost. And then they would go, you would, you were not able to go to the first floor, which was like the kitchen, living room, and then their bedroom. So they had like three or four floors in a townhouse too, but we just rented the, basically the bedroom and the bathroom. So we were just going out, you know, doing our thing during the day. And then we would come back and just sleep there. Um, and it was great. And the people are usually very great and accommodating, but Cartagena in Colombia, it was actually an Airbnb, but it was one of our friend's friends but it was through airbnb um and it's really neat that you um uh can uh can stay somewhere i think if you know whether it's the whole house like you said or you just rent a room uh here in hershey a friend had in a two-bedroom apartment he was airbnb the bedroom in his two-bedroom apartment for people that were coming in and out and he would hang with them like he would say like he was very much like look like I, I like to hang out. I like to eat. I like to do this. Like when you, you're, you know, rent the room, like, but I live here, you know, and it was just a small little tiny apartment and he would have people Weird. come in, people come in and going all the time. Like he'd sit, he'd probably smoke weed with that. I have no idea. Like he's probably just drinking That's beers. Weird. Like who knows? I mean, but it's funny. I, you have to know what you're getting into. I think and trust millennial, you have to be trusting that if you are renting, you know, on the other, on the flip side, um, it's good money though. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's a whole, it's a whole empire. I mean, some people have whole, like multiple, have, have you're a, right. Yeah. A portfolio. Yeah. A whole portfolio mm-hmm. of, of just, I would like, do that. 
Like some people I've heard like in New York city, like people will have like whole buildings and they have like individual apartments in those buildings. And they just like, like a hotel almost mm -hmm. like they even have people to like check in and stuff, but it's crazy. Um, number mm -hmm. one is, I mean, for me, it's no surprise. Um, it's something that I remember you had to, get, when you first, when it first came around in order to get on this thing, you had to have a college, uh, email address like you like there was no way to get on this thing and i and i remember the first time getting on this website it was it, it it's complete obviously it's completely different from what it is now uh, you're probably do, do, do you think you have an idea of what it's, i'm talking about peggy and i are guessing and sean facebook it's facebook yeah we right were and i feel that. like we can do an entire live and i think we should do an entire live talking about like the pros and cons of Facebook because um, it's such a polarizing topic right now, especially with the whole meta thing, right? The metaverse and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and the whole, you know, data and the, you know, all the, all the stuff that comes with Facebook, but, um, but just talking about it from a simple standpoint of brand and millennials, like, like I said, I really, that's probably, I mean, besides my space, right? That yeah. Was, we started was, Facebook. Yeah. We, we start our, our, we started Facebook. Yeah. Like, you know, Zuckerberg is, we were in college is, when is a millennial, Facebook right? started. Yeah. And Facebook started when we were in college and we were the kids in college who started Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, without, I mean, good or bad, whatever you want to say about Facebook, it, you can say all the bad things that you want about Facebook, but guess what? You're still getting on. Like Look you're still your, on. It. <laughs> you have to pop up the the the, the note that uh, that Peggy just wrote. This is hilarious. So oh, she said. The, so she said, I remember being in college at the same time as you and stalking your Facebook. LOL. <laughs> oh, she could stalk your Facebook. So I think that Facebook, the evolution of Facebook, has such has changed even over the last five years too. But a lot of the boomers got on Facebook at some point in the last, you know, eight, 10 years, maybe two. And a lot of the younger kids don't like Facebook. So the Gen Z, uh, they also, they like the Snapchat, the, the Snapchat, they like Snapchat and Instagram more. And I know that there's different platforms now that they weren't, they didn't exist before that you could use for different things. So Instagram pictures, bam, Twitter, funny quotes. And typically it's, you know, news like, or quotes and stuff yeah I, I feel like twitter is more like gen xers like mm -hmm. that's more of a gen x type of thing and i feel like even with instagram i still feel like that's a more percentage us millennial brand. right i do i agree absolutely um, and, and and more so like but like you start to get into the snap chats of the world even the tiktoks like oh yeah, yeah we're, we're on there but we're not the dominant right person in that space right, right? absolutely um, and i think that i think that also that we because we did start facebook we have this like this tie to it in a sense to not leave it in this in a way but i feel that we ha were the generation that when we w got on it because of college and, and connecting with people and we understand it a little bit because of that con like with the connection that now these are the people you, you see people that got married that have kids and that are using and then share their pictures, kids pictures, update their family. So while the older generations like it too, because they like to stay connected, it is the way for millennials to put the stuff out there for our family, you know, for family um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, to keep in touch. Yeah. And, and Sean here says the teens in my house are all about the snap and the TikToks. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I have, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, has Snapchat just fallen off the face of the planet because like you don't hear a lot about them anymore? Um, I don't see a lot of like Snap. I think I think really they're they're starting to lose some ground there. Is what I feel like. I, I don't think know. it's twenty. I think there's a lot of twenty year olds that are on it. Um, that that they still use it a lot to send 
um, funny pictures and videos and things. I have a couple of my girlfriends that were on it. I went off of it for years and then I went back on and it's maybe three girls that we just send dumb stuff to, you know, like this morning it was her cat licking herself and she just, the comment was, you know, Oh, what a lady, you know, cause she yeah. was like, like, yeah, you know, it is. It's just stuff that you want to send something. It's funny. Um, and share it with somebody, but that's, it's literally just me and three back and forth. It's like three girls and we just send. Yeah. It's like quite essentially sending like stupid emails back and forth to each other, like, yeah. you, you know, but it like only lasts for a couple of seconds or something like that. Right. So, yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely think it's probably the least used of all of them. I mean, there's probably stats about it. I'm sure there is about the usage of, um, wow. And when it came out, it was also to send pictures that were going to be erased, although people can take a screenshot and it says you can take a screenshot. And I did see that Instagram in the DMs. I think you can see when somebody takes a screenshot of that, too. So yeah. don't don't think that your stuff is not getting seen. Oh, by the way, by the entire company that runs, yes. you know, the Facebook, face, the Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, like even though. I mean, I would people love are to have that it. job. It I is, would love to have that shit's job. shit's out there, just so you know. You don't think it's out there, but it's out there. Could you imagine having that job and just some of the shit they Scrolling have seen over through. the years? Oh, my God. They're probably like, people are disgusting. Like, oh. The stuff that's on the internet, people are weird. Oh, there, it's um, their job is just to look at stuff. Yeah, but, but anyways, that brings us to the end of the those are good brands we keep we're brands. keeping them alive yeah the brands that would not exist without millennials so you know you know you were talking about come you know you're sending out thank you cards and stuff and holiday cards i feel like those brands should send us all millennials some yeah. cards this this holiday season maybe from made to keep you know maybe right. they need to reach out to them <laughs> and send out massive yes. cards to all the millennials saying thank you for keeping us alive but yes it's true thank but, you customers but right on brand right because we're very brand oriented is that time of the show where we have the millennial meme of the week yes so, millennial meme last week we did not have one um just to let you know um so this this time i'm picking it up and uh really i didn't know where to go with this I just typed in brand memes and this one just was funny to me. Um, <laughs> so it's a picture. <laughs> it's oh a picture gosh. of a piece of cereal with a really angry face. And it says, when your mom asks for cereal, but your mom, when you ask her for cereal, but your mom gets you the off brand. And it's, what the <laughs> cinnamon toast frick is this? <laughs> so. So, so it's funny about brands and off brands because Aldi has like off brands and you yeah. have to get used to the idea that it's not cinnamon toast. It's yes. Cinnamon, you know, teast. Or something. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. It's something stupid. Um, like that, toasters, right? you know, toast, cinnamon toasters. And, uh, yeah. and you know, what the hell? <laughs> what um, the frick is this? So I thought that was a good one to kind of. That's cute. Yeah. So, um, but also guys, Mel wasn't here with us last week, but I we did do a Mel's moment, but obviously Heather did yes, the Mel's thank moment. You. So uh, without further ado, it is Mel's moment. And so this is a time at the end of the show where Mel gives to give us a piece of advice, something we're going to take into the weekend, maybe something on brand, maybe it'll be something <laughs> off brand. Who knows uh, what we're going to get out of I Mel today. Know. But Mel, without further ado, take it away. I, you know, I, I, I think this was a great topic about, uh, about brands and it, and it is good because it shows how powerful millennials are and how we're keeping these billion dollar companies in business. See, that's, and that's the picture you should take for the, yeah, for the screenshot. I need to take a screenshot. Um, <laughs> but I also think that it's important that, um, you know, that it shows also why we're doing this podcast. I think we love to talk about all this fun stuff that sometimes we talk about really serious stuff and we talk about things that are affecting millennials and things that we go through and all that. And I think it's actually interesting to praise us too for the stuff that we do and whether it is supporting these brands and companies or 
um, you know, the lifestyle that millennials have, we like to experience things. We like to travel. We like the vacation. We like instant gratification. We like all those things. So I think that it's interesting that there are brands out there who are, you know, not only really uh, we're the top customer, you know, and the supporter, but also, um, but also they sometimes are catering to us, I think, which is neat a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think go out this weekend, you know, whatever brands you love support, but you know, let's get back into the holiday spirit of support local. Yes. <laughs> and like I said about the holiday cards, um, there's so many of these big box companies and while, um, you know, there are certain thing aspects of these big companies that people do benefit from individually, you know, small businesses and stuff. I think that we could we could use this um, brand discussion to to start the conversation about supporting local businesses again for the holidays and, um, you know, and, and, and trying to shop local. Uh, we love that. And, you know, maybe we'll do another one that we did last year. I feel like we, we talked about some of our local um, local companies and maybe we talk about local brands that yeah. made it big or something. Yeah. Um, but totally. you know, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well guys, we hope hopefully you enjoyed the show. If you did always make sure you support us by liking this, commenting on this, sharing this. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're a little brand trying to grow into a big brand. Uh, <laughs> We're a little brand. <laughs> um, I think we have a great brand, the Millennial. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, we do. We have an awesome, amazing brand. Uh, but we we really do uh, appreciate it, guys. So make sure that you take some time for this weekend to enjoy your weekend. Have some, you know, spend some time with some family friends mm -hmm. you know here at, in lit it's it's first friday so we're gonna oh yeah maybe, maybe we'll go down and support some local brands down there in the city so we're gonna That's check awesome. those out but um but like i said guys enjoy the rest of your weekend or enjoy your weekend have a yeah. good one we will see you next week for another episode of Millennial. I'll be in Dominican Republic, everybody. Mm. On the beach. I won't be. I'll be here in. I'm gonna do it live. I'm gonna do it. There. Pennsylvania. So, no, but anyways, guys, it. have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.